All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on bringing talk, text, and learn from kindergarten to your library. Um, I'm very excited to have Jody and Slava here from the Ypsilanti District Library to tell us more about this wonderful um, program they have uh, set up and implement it and are making available to libraries across Michigan, thanks to the Institute of Museum and Library Services uh, National Leadership Funding. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand the baton over today to Jody and Slava. All right, thank you everyone for being here. Let me get my screen sharing. And we are ready to go. So um, as Kathy said, this um, we're going to talk about text and learn for kindergarten and the acronym is TALK. It is an early literacy text messaging service for parents with children five and under. And what, it, what we developed during the pilot study from 2017 to 2020 was the set of activities. So there are 650 activities parents can do with their kids to help prepare them for kindergarten. And they are um, leveled in development from birth to the time a child turns the, um, six. So um, that's how the service works, is that every week parents get two of these messages and they progress along. So for example, if a parent signs up, and there are two ways to sign up, either on the website, texttolearn.com, there's a form they can fill out, or they can send the word talk to a short code, a five digit phone number. And that allows them to enter two pieces of data so that they are placed on this continuum of text messages. Um, they have to enter their child's birth date, which tells them the system which text message to send. So for example, this one with practice math while coloring, that's for like an older toddler about to be a preschooler. And so it's almost in the middle. And if that's where the parent entered, then they, they would get two messages a week all the way until they turned six and they would graduate and get a congratulations, you're ready for kindergarten message. Um, and so that's kind of everything that's been created. The messages come at 4.15, different days of the week, depending on the child's birthday. The messages, in addition to being leveled by a child's development, they mostly require materials you have at home. They can be done during daily routines, like when you're doing the washing or the grocery shopping. And they've already been thoroughly reviewed not only by high scope curriculum specialists who helped with the developmental leveling, but with uh, literacy um, specialists in our community and by parents for cultural sensitivity. So um, occasionally we send a shortened URL link that sends them to the talk website as well. And that has different pictures of like hand motions and songs and then a few videos that help parents like know exactly what we're asking them to do because the messages are very short little snippets of information. Um, in addition, libraries who have signed up are able to send two event text messages per month. And this is an example of one that we sent um, back when we were open, of course, and it had a link that opened up to our events calendar on our website. And the activities build all types of skills, even though we call it an early literacy messaging service, we're really trying to reach like the full range of kindergarten readiness skills. Okay. Um, so why would your library want to sign up for a program like TALK? Um, one of the best things about TALK is that text messages are um, really reach parents anywhere and anytime. If you're at a grocery store, if you're at a laundromat, um, if you're just hanging out with your child in the middle of the day and all of a sudden you get a text message that tells you, um, you know, to use your laundry, to sort for colors or something like that. It's really easy and accessible uh, for everybody. It's also easy and anonymous to sign up. All you really need is your phone number and the child's birthday. So there's no ads or anything added um, like a lot of apps do. So 
Um, and small bits of information are shared frequently. So there's not a big project that you have to sit down and do with your child. It's more of a um, just a really small day-to-day -day routine that you can incorporate into your routine. It's really easy. And then it shows parents that it's, er, the learning is easy and fun and they can do it with their kids anywhere, even during their chores that they're doing. And also it connects them to library resources. The libraries are able to share um, events through our text message system as well. Um, so it brings, it could potentially bring parents that are not nor library goers to the library as well. Um, and according to our research, it's, uh, that changing parents' behavior really improves the child's school readiness. And that's what we're aiming for, is to get these kids ready for kindergarten. Um, so anybody, um, any parent or caregiver in Michigan can sign up to receive text messages. It doesn't have to be a mom or dad. It could be um, somebody from a daycare or a grandparent or um, an older sibling or somebody like that. Again, all you need is a uh, zip code and the child's date. And then um, any public library in Michigan can sign up and we offer them those services and they can offer the, to the parent in their community. So how did the library fit in? Um, as we already know, libraries are already um, school readiness experts. We have parents that come to us um, asking for book list and um, I need other resources to get kids ready for um, school. So of course, the more knowledge we share with parents, the better. So this is just another tool in your toolkit that you're able to provide for the parents that come in and ask you those questions. Um, this program is based on every child ready to read. So it's really thoroughly researched and um, based on um, really good evidence and that it really does work. And then um, in the communities, libraries are really trusted institution. This is one of the only free spaces that people can come in and, and not expect it to pay. They're just able to hang out and spend some time. Um, so libraries traditionally have this space in the community so we ha can have these conversations with parents um, about their child literacy without any pressure for the parents as well. Um, so you can... Um, the point of this program is to build your user uh, base and then you are able to share any other library information with them. There's two text messages that you can send a month about events in your library um, and any other offerings depending on the age or for all age groups as well. So um, we've had a few questions, so I thought I would go ahead and answer some of those up front, some of the typical questions that we've been getting. Um, there is no cost as long as the grant funding remains. So if you sign up, um, you get an MCLS account. That's a talk account, even if you're not an MCLS member. And the, the grant funding is paying for the text messages themselves. It's very cheap. We um, estimate that it costs about $1.80 per child per year. And so at the end of the grant period, MCLS will have some sort of sliding scale so that people will be able to, um, depending on the size of their library, participate even if they're not an MCLS member. Um, in addition, people have asked a little bit about other responsibilities. And really the only other thing is that occasionally High Scope will send surveys um, because our audience right now is not just the parents, but the libraries. And we wanna know what we can do to improve the program to make it better for you and for future library users. So there might be an occasional survey to answer. And other than that, we just need you to promote talk or you should promote talk yourself if you're participating because that's how you get parents to use the service. And then you can have an audience to share your text messages with through the MCLS platform. So we have provided all the tools that you need to be successful with this. And we have, um, once you receive an MCLS account, there are a number of guides that we've created based on our experience during the pilot study and a lot of promotional materials. So this is an example of one of the guides that tells you how to get started with using talk just at the library. So of course, the easiest thing that you're already doing, you share flyers, you share social media, you have bookmarks, all of those things are provided. But then um, 
and including elevator speeches. So you could like put these at the reference desk so that all staff members are like aware of the service and can talk to anybody very quickly if they have a question about it. But then we go beyond that and we have divided partners, types of community partners into five groups. And we have the similar types of guides for working with everybody, all the different types of community partners. So Slava is gonna tell you a little bit about those. Sorry. <laughs> um, one of the most important components, I think, of this program is being able to build um, partnerships with your community. So you're not only able to promote talk at the library to the folks that are already using the library, or already maybe interested in early literacy, but also kind of um, going ahead and reaching those hard to reach populations, folks that aren't coming to the library for whatever reason. Um, so that's when the community partners really come in. So we've um, we created a pretty comprehensive guide based on our own experience and the conversations that we've had with other organizations who do community partnerships uh, to provide the tools that we found um, helpful for us. So really quickly, the types of partnerships that we've uh, found were the local government um, agencies and civic organizations like WIC office, um, your local sheriff's office, things like that. And then um, education and child care providers, obviously schools, preschools, daycares, um, and other like Head Start and early on um, organizations, local businesses, anywhere from grocery stores, restaurants, um, and uh, you know, hair salons, barbershops, uh, wherever parents can be hanging out with their kids. Um, laundromat um, is a great tool, great place. There's a, you know, kids are hanging out, possibly not with nothing to do. This is a great place to promote early literacy. And then finally, medical professionals as well. So uh, pediatricians and hospitals, stuff like that. Um, so Jody, if you want to click on the um, partnership guide, this is an example of what it looks like. Um, it breaks down all of the uh, categories that I just talked about um, and kind of gives you an example of what, uh, what kind of materials you would want to use, where you would want to use posters versus flyers or um, you know, other handouts. And then um, also you can, if you want to scroll a little bit. Um, so this one talks about the local businesses and it just gives you tips on how to engage with the uh, local business owners based on our research and our own personal experience with this program as well. Um, so things uh, in this partnership guide, there are letters of introduction and um, that you are able to send out to those community partners that you're trying to approach. I think one of the most complicated things is actually finding that person within the organization that you're trying to target who would be interested in promoting. Um, and it really ex explains what talk is all about, that the community partner is not obligated to do anything other than to just promote talk to their partners or clients or um, customers. And I'll say to just that each letter kind of touches on why it's important for the um, for them to have a very literate, like well-educated um, community as well. And to try to like buy some, uh, to try to like find that connection that you would have with that partner. Uh, so we have, all of the promotional material that you're able to use to reach out to those community partners. Um, and there are templates that you can download to put your own logo and your contact information in there. Um, all of the, so all the promotional materials are posters, there's bookmarks, yard signs, billboards. Um, there are posters that you can put in a changing room and a bathroom. Um, some of them have examples of text messages that you would use, so there were, um, these text messages that the parents can read that right then and there, like at a drive through or, in a, you know, at a park or something like that and do the activity right then and there uh, with their child. They're also translated into Spanish. Um, you may or may not want to use that in our community. We have a large Spanish speaking population. So it was important to us to reach those parents as well. And the, the files are in three types. So if you are not able to edit PDFs, then all the bookmarks and the smaller flyers and um, promotional cards, those are as JPEGs. So you could put them into Publisher and then layer your contact information and logo over the top so that you can customize it. 
and they also come without any words in the word bubble if you want to customize for a specific location or a partnership that you have that's special to your community. Uh, so as I mentioned, the all of the promotional material is designed to fit uh, all of the locations that we've talked about that could possibly be community partners. So here are two examples here. There's uh, a poster for an apartment complex mail room uh, for so that if you were to partner with an apartment complex, you can put that in their mail room. And um, this is an opportunity for the parents to engage with this activity right then and there. Um, and also a restaurant drive through So um, there are doctor's offices, laundromats, as I said, all of those other par possible partners are included. So, and really quickly, I guess, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to use all of these or you reach out to all of them. It depends on each community individually. Um, for us, these were the partners that we identified in our community, but of course for you, it may be different. And in addition, there are um, social media, there's a social media toolkit. Um, everything was developed by a local marketing firm that we use at our library named it's called q m and so they shared some of their tips for using social media um not only the goal but the numbers that you can track if you're tracking the data and then they gave some specific like short calls to action you can use hashtags um, other little short bits of information. And then Slava and I put together some text messages from the database in both English and Spanish. So you can copy and paste that, like for example, on Twitter, if you don't want to use one of the pre-made um, kind of like photo or highly branded pieces, you could always just share a message to help promote. And, um, in addition, they're for all types of social media in English and Spanish. And we have a Facebook page and you can reshare things that we put on there. When we were um, talking and putting together the guide for working with medical professionals, we worked with Reach Out and Read at the University of Michigan. And they said that right now, um, the doctors aren't really sending home very much paper. And even before that, they were trying to go towards QR codes that they could put a sticker on something that a, um, that a patient is leaving with. And so we had Q&M make these um, QR codes. They come in two sizes and they are circles and squares. And um, we're even putting one in our newsletter. It's taking up less space because once people are familiar, you can just do like a quick reminder with something like this. And all of these are available in the um, MCLS account through a Google Drive. And finally, these other tools that we have, if you are, um, one thing that we did every year, we went to the ISD and right before school, they had an in-service for all the preschool teachers and we could quickly do like a short PowerPoint to 150 teachers and then provide the flyers. The teachers would then take it to their classrooms and make sure parents got that. So when we're talking about not just being able to reach the people in the library or whoever's already on your mailing list, it's like little partnerships like that where people can share with more and more people that really gets the word out and makes it successful. In addition, um, in we, of course, were partnering with local schools, so we would go to school nights and um, school fairs and any kind of outreach table, we provide this sign-up sheet. It's just a half-page form. You can use it. Parents can directly fill it out. Then you can take it back to the library, enter the data yourself, and get people signed up that way. And... Um, we also provided a lot of swag. So this is like one example is talk bubbles, but we um, have examples of what we purchased in the Google um, Drive so that you can get ideas about what you might wanna take with you to outreach visits. And finally, we have all of this ready to go. You don't have to do much of anything, but if you want to customize, there's a style guide, all the logos individually, so you can pull them out and put them on your own flyer if you wanted to. 
And um, this is a map. This is on text2learn.com, the website. It's on the partner about partners tab, which we'll show you in a little bit. But these are all the libraries in blue that have already have a talk account. And the ones in orange, which might be somebody here, um, have expressed interest. So um, we'll keep this up to date. And the reason we're doing this is because it's um, a lot of the services that you want to work with are countywide. So when we were doing the pilot study, we were working with libraries, four other libraries in Washtenaw County. And that meant that every time we went to the ISD, that was like reaching countywide. Or if we were working with the Great Start Readiness Program, that was going countywide, the sheriff and the health department. So by looking to see other libraries near you that are already using Talk, you can reach out to them and make a plan to hit some of those larger um, organizations so that you don't all have to go and do that. You can like do it as a team and it takes less staff. Okay. Um, so through, your, um, um, through your account here that Jody had mentioned, you're able to send um, text messages and monitor your data. I know somebody had just asked um, how are the steps for individual libraries kept. So um, here's where you would go. So um, you would go, you would get, if you were to sign up, um, you would get an MCLS account um, and you can go ahead and go on their website and um, we'll provide the link and you can sign up um, and log into your account. So it gives you access to talk promotional material. So all of the guides that we just talked about um, are on there on Google Drive. So all you have to do is just click and download the entire thing. Um, and then it also enables you to schedule your text. You can view you, your reports. So it would tell you how many people um, you have signed up for um, in each zip code as well. And then um, you can add or delete your users. So there's three different tiers of users uh, that you're able to add if you wanted to somebody um, to just look at the data or just able to be able to just send a scheduled text message. Um, you're able to add users um, and then you can update your library con and contact information. Um, so if you were to log into your account and click, click on the tab that says schedule event text, this is what you would see. Um, and here you would, you would have to um, go ahead and choose the age category for the text. So these are the text messages that you want to send uh, about the events in your library. Um, you can either select an age category if there's like a story time for, uh, you know, toddlers or something like that, or like, or versus babies. Or you can, if you don't select an age, it just sends the text message to everybody who has signed up through your library. Um, you can also choose the zip code. If uh, we have a couple of libraries that are signed up for talk that are whose zip codes overlap. Um, so we wanted to have that an, op an option for people to be able to choose the zip code um, to which to send these text messages. Or you, again, you can leave it blank and it would send it to all of the zip codes who are signed up in your area. And then you would compose your message. Um, there's 160 character limit. Um, including the word event. And the reason that we did that is because all of the other text messages are um, prefaced with the word like play, write, talk, um, and others. So it's saying, so this one is just, it says event. So people, parents know who the, this is coming from in particular. Um, it's coming from us, so it's not confusing. Um, so that counts towards your character limit. And if you go over your character limit in your text message, not going to let you do it. Uh, we have an option to send an event in Spanish as well. Um, I would suggest that unless you have a native Spanish speaker or somebody who's really good at Spanish on your staff, you could use Google Translate. It's not the best. Um, so it would be, you can just send, you can just copy and paste the same message in English. Um, from our experience and the Spanish speaking parents that we talked to, they said, um, it's completely fine. If they need to use Google Translate, they do it on their own. Um, it's fine for them. So also, if you were to include a um, link to the uh, for, for the event, there's a URL shortener that has we have a link on that page over there, um, just to save you some character space if you were to do a link. Um, so also, if you do not put anything in the Spanish, 
um, category, it won't let you send the text message as well. So make sure you fill it in, whether in English or in Spanish. So finally, you would choose the date that the text message would go out on and the, um, your time and time of the day as well. Uh, we have those limited because we do have those regular text messages that come out at 4.15, so we didn't want them to overlap necessarily or have people accidentally get a text message in the middle of the night or something like that. Um, so, but there, there's also a link to the translator on the web page as well. And finally, your reports, you're able to download your report for the month. Um, it would tell you the zip code in which your patrons are registered and how many people are registered um, and also how many of people have opted out. And you can see it according to each zip code. So that way you can track your data. Um, and in addition, I didn't copy the whole screen, but it because there are more children enrolled than parents, because a lot of parents have two children, you can enroll up to two people. Um, you get stats for the children compared to the parents, how many people opted out, how many people have graduated. And um, right now, this isn't functioning, but you have to grab the data whenever you want it. But eventually you'll be able to choose date ranges so that you can actually kind of make a graph without checking in each month on the user stats. So MCLS is still developing that for us. Um, so also we have a progress report template that you can share data with your community partners. Um, this is important when you create those partnerships because that way people see that they're actually impacting folks in their community. Um, so this is a really um, useful tool to be able to share. So, you know, instead of just going to a community partner, slapping down on a poster on the wall and forgetting about it, that way you have um, a mutual beneficial going relationship that is happening and you're updating them on what's going on in their community. And this is one of the, um, this one has more information, but then we have a simpler version that's mostly um, just like updates and the graph that we would use for quarterly board reports. So finally, we'll take a look quickly at the talk website because this is another resource that comes with the service. So um, anybody who might scan the QR code, they can end up on the site and they can quickly fill out the form to get registered if they don't wanna send the word talk to the short code. Uh, it also gives them a little bit of information. It shows some sample texts and why it's important to do um, to participate. We have a lot of book lists. So in addition to just the text messages, because we can't fit very much obviously in 160 characters, we link back to this website. So if we are, um, you know, parents can always access this, but they definitely are sent here when they um, are routed you know, if we suggest that babies should read a board book, then that would pop up. They're all available through Mel so that anybody can get them even if your library doesn't own them. Um, and then there are other books. So we have quite a few book lists. We've just recently updated those and we'll maintain it. We also had songs that are in both English and Spanish and there is a tab for, for Spanish speaking parents to read about the history of the program, find songs and book lists that are just in Spanish as well. And then for libraries, if you have any questions, we have two buttons. One is more information, which goes to a Library of Michigan form. So we can answer your questions and contact you about getting signed up and then we, you can also get back to your MCLS account. So this is what it looks like when you log in, you just have four choices. This is um, like our user level that allows us to create libraries um, and add you in and create your account. But the toolkits are all directly available from there. We have it divided up into promotional materials and building partnerships. And when you view it as in the grid mode, you're able to see all of it fairly quickly. 
can get it up there. So you can see that you can find logos or the posters. Once you get into posters, it's divided by language. All the guides are available very quickly to read online. So all of that was available through um, texttolearn.com. And um, we have a link here, which I can put in the chat, which is if you know you, if you don't have any questions and you know you're ready to get started, then you can fill that out and we will get back to you soon with your MCLS login. But in the meantime, we wanted to leave pl plenty of time for questions. So I will stop screen sharing and we can take questions. Oh, thank you, Jody and Slava. Um, all right, so we have a couple in the in the chat box. Um, there was a question about when this grant will run out, and that is August of 2023, or when the money for the text runs out sooner. Can, so can you go back over that part again, Jody? Yeah, um, like, base, I'm going to put this in here really quickly before I forget. So that's the link if you want to fill out the form to get your MCLS account. Um, <clears throat> When we applied for the grant, we had to estimate. And so we assume that the amount we estimated will last for the full grant term, but obviously if there were too many users, it could run out sooner, but we're expecting it to last about two years. Great, thank you. There is another question in the chat um, about um, promoting events. So. I, I heard you say that rule of thumb is kind of two events a month, is that? Yes, we did, um, we had like a lot of focus groups during the pilot study and if we sent too many text messages, people are more likely to opt out because they're getting more than they want to. So that's why right now it's capped at two messages from the libraries per month. And you right. can schedule them all at the beginning of your season. So if you do your programming season, you can put all your text messages in there and they will just automatically sent based on the date that you chose. And we usually did it, I think about nine days before the event, we would send the message so that people could get it on their calendar and be prepared. Um, somebody asked me in one of the other trainings, like, does it have to be a, an event? Because obviously we don't have that many events right now. You can send anything um, that you want to. I did a library supply kit that was a kindergarten readiness kit and they went very quickly. I ran out of those. Um, and you could, you know, even share your own book list or anything that gets people back to your website. And you do not have to necessarily use the term event. Like if you wanted to use your library's acronym or something short, it's just like it needs to be consistent so that people know it's coming from you and they start to recognize you know, that it's you telling them something because people really do enjoy getting the messages from the library. And is it okay to cross promote, like, for example, maybe choosing one of those posts to be an event by um, the local Great Start? Yes, you could do any community event you wanted to. So our um, Great Start used to have a touch a truck and we advertised that through talk. So anything, we just try to have it free. Like we did a free story time at the art museum once too. It's, that was our main goal is like community things that are gonna build school readiness for anybody that's not gonna cost anything. Great. Um, Kristen wants to know how much will this cost after the grant period runs out? And I heard you mention a sliding scale and cost per child. Can you go over that? Mm -hmm. We don't have that plan in place yet. I think that we need to see how many libraries sign up because the more users, the lower, um, it, the lower the rate per text message. And so that will be something that MCLS will be figuring out like near the end as we have everybody going. But like I said, it's only about $1.80 per year per child. And so they would um, have that factored in as well as whatever it will cost them in terms of their staffing, which I don't think will be much because it's pretty much set up and it's just running on its own for the most part right now. Great. Um, Mari wants to know, can you opt out of events 
uh, reminders, but not the early literacy messages as a patron? No, um, you have to, the only thing you can opt out of are the photos. If you do, there are some things that are like finger play images that teach the parents the hand motions to rhymes that you use in story time. And you can opt out of getting those, but not the other things. As long as you have a, if there's no library attached to your zip code, because right now anybody in Michigan can sign up for this. And um, we're thinking we'll be able to advertise like on Secretary of State, um, digital displays when people are going in person places again and um, working with the Great Start Readiness programs perhaps. And um, so people will be signing up, but if there's not a library attached to that zip code, then they're not gonna get an event message. But if there is a library, then they automatically there's no opting out of that. We actually found that, you know, people, like I said a minute ago, that was something that people really liked is knowing activities that their kids could do. Definitely. A um, few more questions in the chat, but I'm going to invite folks that you're welcome to unmute and ask as well. Um, one of the ones in, in chat is asking about um, the graduation cutoff date is it possible for a family to opt to stay in even after their child graduates? So the way that the messages are leveled, um, it's probably not gonna be that beneficial unless they still have younger children. If they had like, let's say a three-year-old and a five-year-old that they'll stop getting the messages for the five-year-old when that child turns six, but the three-year-old is still going through the process. And so the parent would get repeat messages after a couple of years. Um, and if somebody, like I've had this question even recently, somebody had like a developmentally delayed child and she, when she first tried to put in the birth date, it wasn't letting her in. And I said, well, your child's too old. And she's explained that she wanted like, um, things that were designed for a, a younger child. And so I told her just to alter the birth date. So if you ever get questions like that, you know, we try to be as flexible as we can. And there's no reason why um, people can't change the birth date if they feel that it's beneficial for their child to stay in. But we do, you know, we, we reckon like once they get the graduation message, then we say visit your local library for activities that are you know age appropriate for you, for your, your children. So hopefully it doesn't cut people off immediately from the library. It's just that because it's geared towards this younger age group, there's not really a benefit for them to stay in longer. Sounds good. All right. And, um... Do libraries have access to viewing all the text messages as they go out so they can possibly incorporate them into finger plays and, and programming in the library? Yeah, I think that somebody from your library should sign up and then you'll get all the messages. I mean, you, you don't see all 650, obviously, because if you choose a child's date as a baby, you're gonna start as a baby and move up. So it's a little bit tricky. That's why we put a range of activities in the guide so that you can cut and paste for social media. And then beyond that, you should just, you know, you can have a couple people sign up because we want you to be aware of the service too, to see how it ties in, to see what, um, not only, you know, is it like you can talk about the tips in story time and you're going to pr promote it in story time when we're in person again, but we also have those blank word bubble flyers and I use those around our play spaces at the library all the time and change them up based on whatever toys I put out to encourage parents to talk. But then while they're talking, then they also see, oh, get more tips like this to play at home. So, um, yeah, definitely would encourage you to sign up as well. And um, I know we have teachers that are signed up so that they can use it in their classrooms and daycare providers. The more people know about it, I think it's easier for you to promote and for teachers that sign up can promote it and use it. And um, that's completely fine. Great. Um, just to clarify um, my mistake, I was putting our older sign up form in the chat earlier. So use the new form 
<clears throat> we'll double check the old form if you already did that today. Um, yeah. Jody has access to all that and can can and still then, pull you. <laughs> yeah. If you just have questions, you can put it there and I'm trying to check it every few days and answer. And so definitely that one's fine to use too. But then for the people who had already expressed interest on that first form, then I'm like, are you really, really ready before I make your MCLS account? So that's what the second form is. <laughs> Did we have anything else? So um, also, I think people were asking a little bit about the data and you do have control over um, communicating with users in your zip codes that have questions. You're able to um, see those messages that come through and then respond to them. So sometimes people wanna change their language preference or change their child's birthday and you are able to manage that sort of thing for people. Awesome. So who's feeling ready? <laughs> Anybody have more questions? You're welcome to unmute. Also, I will say that we are going to be offering, I, I'm pretty sure like in early June, and then again, towards the end of the summer, um, chances for you to just have an MCLS training where you, we walk you through all steps of that. It's really important that you have somebody to send the messages to because when you, if you have that MCLS account and you were looking and you were like, I don't have any one year olds right now to send this message to, it's because you haven't built your user base. So you won't see all the ages or all the zip codes until you've signed up more people. So what Kathy and I were thinking is that right now um, you can become familiar with all of this and like, go through all the materials, but kind of like over the summer, you're going to be really busy with summer reading, but then you can make a plan for what you're going to do in the fall when everybody goes back to school. And we'll do some trainings on the account in um, late August and then September. And then you can be ready to like start promoting it when people transition back to school, which was always a really effective time for us. Um, and that was kind of like our thought with this is while you're not busy with summer reading, like introduce it and get you thinking about it. Hi, this is Sarah up at Peter White Library. Um, this might be for Kathy, maybe Jody. Do you guys know, have there been any other UP libraries that have reached out, interested in doing talk? There's just one other and they're not very close to you. I yes. don't think you're up on the Lake Superior. Yeah, or like yeah. There's the Escanaba. Yeah, the other one is like way over, almost in Wisconsin. Oh, one of the iron. Okay. Yeah, I think it might right. be Dickinson. Dickinson County. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. If you, okay. um, but if you're, I don't know how closely you work with anybody else, but I mean, we. It's not like we usually work with the libraries in Washtenaw County, but it was nice to be able to reach out and have some meetings and talk about how to make this work, and we got to know them and. Um, you know, it just takes somebody to kind of reach out and get it started, I think. Well, that's what I was thinking I would go ahead and do and see if any of, you know, if they want to sign up for their own or if they just want to help promote through Peter White, that would be fine with me as well, but we're, we're going to give it a shot. And the overlapping zip code question keeps coming up and you two libraries can claim one zip code. Um, we have a zip code that overlaps with Ann Arbor. So those people are getting our event messages. All of our events are free and open to everybody and we're not really um, advertising. I guess if you advertise the book list, they might have to get it through mail if it's like a specific list for your library. But um, we haven't, we never had any problem with that. So if, you know, you are able to claim two. I mean, two libraries are able to claim the same zip code. And that's up to you to set when you go into your MCLS account. You might also want to check with your library cooperative and see if there's other folks in your cooperative participating, um, especially as the grant funding, when that runs out in 23, you know, does this um, continue to grow and how do you fund it? Although I would say it's less than a glue stick per child. So hopefully we can continue to support this. Um, so uh, Jody, there's another question about talking is teaching, which we've talked about and, and ready to read Michigan before um, how this overlaps, as well as how does this overlap with Ready Rosie? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we we were using Ready Rosie during the pilot study, and we were paying them a certain amount, and we had access to their videos, and we created like a classroom. If anybody uses Ready Rosie, you know, there's like a classroom, and you can set your videos for parents, and then we would send a link to that kind of lesson, and it it's an extra step because they're not gonna get the videos unless they sign up for the Ready Rosie account. So they've already had to sign up for the Taco account, then we had to send a message to sign up for Ready Rosie or else they're getting links that don't go anywhere. Um, but in general, I mean, they're both promoting early literacy in the same ways. And the Ready Rosie does a really good job of modeling it, but you know, it wasn't, it didn't like mesh easily with talk because just because of the logistics of the double accounts but you can definitely do both i mean we have um a thousand books before kindergarten going and we have other early literacy programs that we offer through the library and it's kind of like a package of everything that goes together to build school readiness along with story times and the play spaces and everything that you're doing um, the talking is teaching our county we were already doing talks so they did not sign up for that but we were very um influenced by talking is teaching we looked at using that before we ever started talk and the programs like are very similar in terms of messaging in the community if there is any way that your community's already doing it and they can just add on the text messages, that's fine because talking is teaching doesn't have the text messaging component, but everything else that they're going to get is really similar. And I know that Kathy was going to um, see how we can work with them to let the people at the state know that this is here and that the programs mesh really well to make that easier for all of you out in your communities. I would say the nicest thing about talking is teaching and the talk, text and learn, you know, they're, they're all very similar to the five practices of every child ready to read, um, which Ready to Read Michigan is based on. So you, you we're thinking as librarians, like all these different programs that we're juggling, but to the general public, it's, they're getting the same messaging about those practices and, and working with their children. And that's what's really important in the end. They don't know who sponsors what, you know, um, that's something we see a lot more of on our end of the work, but um, to just get consistent messaging um, to talk, play, read, write, and sing with your child um, is really important, so. Yeah, and we're less concerned with the brand, you know, than uh, getting the messages to parents. So hopefully that's something that um, we can work out to make it smoother for everybody. And I'll just say, you know, the team at Ypsilanti District Library and all your partner libraries, last, they, they spent three years building this program. It's been tried and tested. <laughs> um, so it's really exciting. And then IMLS picked it up for, for this bigger um, grant. And it's really fantastic that it's happening here in Michigan. So I hope everybody um, considers participating in it. Yeah, we do we, just, do I we just, have any? Oh. <laughs> So, Sorry, Jody. I was just going to say, like, we would love for it to go um, larger than this. And that's why that component of answering high scope questions is helpful, too, because um, Lisa, um, who's here, our director, she uh, reached out to ALSC before we wrote the grant, and they are in support of it, too. So it would be great if Michigan, you know, was the testing ground for something to be even larger later. I would Thanks, Jody. I would like to say that uh, one of the big benefits of talk over talking is teaching is that it highlights libraries and it's going to help our libraries get access to patrons who have been non patrons so far because it will let them see the value of the library without having to actually come to the library if they're super busy or work, work crazy hours or are a single parent and just can't get there or are intimidated by the library or whatever. Um, and, and everything about talk and everything about the toolkits that are coming to you are all trying to boost your image as um, you know, the, the big early literacy expert in your community. So we hope that 
then it gives you a boost and a promotional boost and lots more users. So true, Lisa. Any other questions? This designed for and by libraries <laughs> uh, could become national. Uh, we do know that MCLS is going to work with Indiana libraries as well and start getting Indiana libraries on board. So it'll be exciting to watch it grow. I do see another question about um, can this replace a thousand books before kindergarten? I We just use it like alongside. So we're still trying to encourage people to read um, the books as well, but this is just an added layer of different things that you can do beyond reading to get ready for school. To touch on something Lisa said about um, kind of branding the library, but also reaching those that might not be coming in your doors. So do you guys want to talk about some of your partnerships in your region that you um, worked with to sign up kids for, for talk? Yeah. Um, beyond the um, beyond schools, which I assume everybody partners with their schools, but we went into like every staff meeting and gave a presentation and made sure that all of the cards went home in the backpacks every year. Um, we also, Lisa built a relationship with the sheriff's department and our community has had a history of some violence during the summer. And so they have an interrupters campaign and they take the materials around to about 2000 door houses door to door in the summer. Um, and they also have a messaging system that they're able to share out through the messaging system about things. And we worked closely with WIC and all the pediatricians. So we visited every pediatrician's office, built that relationship with them, left the flyers. Um, WIC, we stayed in the uh, foyer of the WIC office twice a month and we took two staff so one person could play and occupy the kids while the other person learned about library services, signed up for talk, got some swag. Um, we also worked with the community health and the mental health department to get the message out that way. I'm trying to think. We approached grocery stores about story times. We work with the pool in the summer. We work with businesses. So all the kind of established relationships that we already have for summer challenge, our summer learning program, that um, carries over to early literacy. So you're just like building those kinds of partnerships that you already have and then looking out to see who else there is. So for example, in, we didn't do this yet, but in our guide to businesses, um, there's one about partnering with a barber. So we have a local barner, barber who will give $5 off if the child reads a book while he's there. So, you know, we could easily offer withdrawn books that are still in good condition, put a talk sticker on the front, you know, get the message out that way. So I think thinking creatively, looking around your community, if you have a really small community, then looking larger at the whole county, that's all going to be really important because it's all about the partnerships to reach the people that you don't see. Because you already can easily sign up the people in the story time, but it's beyond that that it really makes the impact because it's text messaging and they don't have to come in the building. All great partners. <laughs> I love it. Any other questions? Got a couple more minutes. Something that maybe hasn't been answered yet. They box this up so nice and neatly. <laughs> I would make one more comment, maybe um, just pitching that this is a, a useful tool to reach people you may not see. Um, our local sheriff early on before we started this program told me that even if a family can't put food on the table, they have a cell phone. So, you know, you're going to, you're going to get people who um, you've never seen before. People are coming out of the woodwork. And I think Jody mentioned that um, we had lots of people respond to our event texts by actually coming to the library and coming to our events. And we saw them for the first time. So it really is a great tool for promoting the library to people who need it. 
Yeah, and in addition, um, I think like right now, it's something like 97% of people in the age of parents do have a cell phone with data. And I don't really think we've had a lot like losing people. At first, I was worried that we would lose um, users with like turnover and phone numbers, but I really haven't seen a lot of that, so. Great. Well, thank you, Slava. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Lisa. Really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this. I'm I'm really especially excited to see it grow. Um, I'm probably gonna try to pretend that I'm a two year old and sign up to get my own texts. <laughs> um, and without any other questions, I'm gonna wrap us up for today. Thank Be you. sure to reach out to Ypsilanti and um, sign up and, and tackle this really great prepackaged program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget to fill out that survey in the chat box, please, and thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm.